Yeah. Hey everyone. Okay. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to uh, take the original music from Mega Man 2 and I will show you the step-by-step -step process in which uh, I turn it into an orchestral cover. So uh, maybe we'll, we will be doing the literal cover arrangement for now. So it means there will be no no deviations, no additional sections for now. It's just going to be the original melody and the original harmony and I will translate that uh, one instrument at a time to orchestral instruments. Yeah, can you hear me? Say hello if you can hear me. Alright. So, well, as you can see, this this is already the edit file. Yeah, uh, as you can see in my, I, maybe you can see in my interface, I already uh, put input the software and hardware that I use. Okay, this, I already uh, prepared the file. As you can see, there's currently 50, 57 tracks. So what I'm using is a piano track, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 different types of percussion. There's also a celesta, a glockenspiel, xylophone, marimba. I'm this is just really actually my orchestral template and it's already pre-prepared. I just uh, preload it and save it as a different name. And I have um, four different timpani tracks, a harp. And this is the most interesting part for you, uh, maybe for especially for uh, co musicians like Terra. I, I have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 different strings tracks. And the reason for this is I separate all the different articulations because it's much easier to organize that way. So I have five, five tracks, uh, three tracks for spiccato, ta -ta 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 -ta, th those uh, jumping violin, and then two tracks for staccato, and then definitely uh, set one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five tracks for legato or or those long bowing long bowing notes for from the violin and then there's two pizzicato tracks and a tremolo track and then there's a separate track for the midi violin and ad another midi violin with a wide reverb and the same goes for the violin two viola and cello and contrabass but it's not always all the time that I use all of this I sometimes just make sure that everything I ne possibly need is already there so I don't need to load everything and decide, uh, take a long time to decide. So there's also the brasses and tubas, English horn. Uh, there's also sometimes I use uh, synthesizer sounds like a classic hip hop lead or, and then I have presets of the four different kinds of basses. There's a Liverpool bass, a, a more traditional bass guitar, upright bass and a Rickenbacker brand and a twangy electric guitar MIDI so basically and then there's also lastly I have four different uh, guitar effects the distortion wah clean and reverb these are for live guitar tracks which I might record so okay anyway the first thing that I do yeah Jason it's alright uh, I just uh, I just uh, I just uh, enumerated all the instrument types I use for the benefit of those who are also musicians. But that's the geekiest part that uh, I will probably... That's the, the, geeky, the, the geekiest mode I will probably be for today. Anyway. Uh, yeah, Soma... Uh, how do you keep track of all the tracks? Well, uh, when I've... If you if you've been doing this like me for maybe <laughs> twenty years already, uh, it would really you would really get used to it. It's kind of like if you're a Photoshop artist or a designer and you have so many layers. How do you keep track of all the layers? Sometimes I do a color coding. Sometimes I just remember, or sometimes I just really memorize what I've done. <laughs> anyway. Oh uh, yeah. So this 
this is the the file that we have here is already the Mega Man 2 main theme. So let's take a listen for it. So for for those of you who might not remember what the main theme of Mega Man 2, this is it. Lovely. Okay, so the first thing that I will always do is figure out the tempo. Sometimes sometimes we are lucky. The song or the MP3 sometimes has the BPM indicated, like the, the beats per minute or the actual tempo. But in this case, uh, I will show you how, to fig how I figure out the tempo of a song manually. So what I do, okay, I will play it with tempo. My default tempo is usually 85 BPM. Let's see if it will match, but I, I doubt it will. So, okay, let me change the tempo, uh, the, the, the metronome volume. It's a little too soft. Okay, soften the MP3 for a while. Okay, as you can see, the tempo is the tempo of the metronome is too slow. Tak, tak, tak. But we need to have it tan, ta, 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 ta. So what I do is I use any percussion track temporarily, and I use the beat map. Terra might be already familiar with this, so. Percussion, okay. Any, any, any of the percussion. You just need to use it as a, as a guide. Okay. No, no, no. I don't want to record with tempo. Okay. Okay. Let's just use this tempo block. Okay. So now this is what I recorded. It's very crude, but it will have to do. Tak 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 tak. Oh, I I, ah, I see it auto quantized everything. No, I I turn off auto quantize for now. Okay. And now I use beat map settings. It's indicated here in the. Okay, it's saving. Okay, what I do is view global tracks. Hey, how's the snow, by the way, in uh, New York? Is it still cold or has it melted already? Okay. Ah, no. Now, where is the where is that beat map settings? <laughs> ah, yeah. Global. Okay, I couldn't. F somehow it messed up. So. Okay, if it doesn't work, what I usually do is just trial and error. Okay, so I am I am have a, a tempo of one eighty five right now, so maybe I estimate it will be something like one ten, one hundred ten beats per minute. So let's see if it works. 
still too slow. I think let's double it. Two twenty. Too fast. How about one eighty? Almost, almost there. I think it worked. I think we're. Uh, I think we found it. Yeah. Sounds about one eighty. You're right, Arthur Ford. Let's listen to the whole song if it works. It's there's a, a little bit of a slowdown by the end. Let's see. Ah, okay. This is the answer. I did not clip the file right at the beginning of the sound. So I zoomed it and I found that it's not really starting at the first note. So I, I sync it again and let's listen. Yeah, I think we've got it. Anyway, it won't, it won't really matter in the end because I will really slow it down. Adjust it a bit to 181. Nah, it's it went too fast. So let's settle with 180. Okay, now th I will do what I will do is turn on uh, flex pitch. A, it's a feature built in uh, in uh, Logic where you can uh, adjust the wave file adjust the tempo adjust the pitch adjust everything and you can slow it down without uh, draining or uh, decreasing the quality of the sound as much as possible so this time since I'm going to arrange this for orchestra f first I will I will first arrange with MIDI instruments but later on uh, when I record it for a video I will also record live violin tracks so right now this original tempo is actually too fast for uh, to be played by humans I mean to be played by humans in an artistic way I find it too fast it's a little it's possible to play it but I think I find it a little too fast to be given room for more expression so what I'm going to do usually is I will slow it down a little bit so when I play it live I can have more room for vibratos and more room for expression okay let's create this in a new file Let's try 170. Okay, so you can you can actually hear some uh, some clipping from the sound because we've already altered the file. But I think it's a bit more a human tempo. Okay, now let's let's get let's get to the to the to the action so the the melody is ta -ta 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 -ta. so what i will do is use the spiccato uh, articulation of the violin okay as you can see i'm not really a good pianist so please bear with me okay where's the tempo record while recording it's too low. Okay, let's record that.
Okay, I made a bum note, but no worries, we can correct that easily. So this is what I recorded. Let's solo that. Ha <laughs> ha noob. Dun da 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 dun da da Okay, adjusting adjusting the measurement. Okay, now we have our main melody, but doesn't sound complete because it's just a spiccato. I am actually sequencing it left knob, sequencing it and using MIDI at the same time. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is double this track and copy some of it in the legato articulation of the violin, of the strings, because the, there is a long pause in the note. So let's see how it will sound. There, closer. Yeah. Okay, so for those of you who are wondering, I'm currently using the strings uh the strings the VST that I'm using is called LA scoring strings. It's one of those high end um library string libraries. And well let me just demonstrate to you how how much I love this uh, VST because for example this is a violin. Okay, I'm experiencing some graining sound. Let me just adjust my audio buffering a bit to higher. Yeah, left knob. I also d I also use uh, mouse and keyboard uh, and uh, a mouse and computer keyboard, but I like to play it personally because it's more human like that. And there's also the hum humanity of when you play the notes, it's not always at the exact same volume or at the exact same uh, uh, pressure. And I want to retain that despite using a lot of computers. And sometimes if you just manually draw the notes, it will come out, it would sound robotic and you have to really uh, adjust each note manually to make it sound human. I'd rather just play the notes because y there's already an automatic human touch to it. And I, if it just sounds a bit off in the, time, in the terms of volume, I, that's the only time I would adjust it with a uh, mouse and keyboard. Otherwise, it would... Otherwise, I would just make a... <laughs> A near uh, eight bit sound. <laughs> yeah, right now. Uh, yeah, if you have, do you, do you have any questions so far, guys? Right now, I am just uh, readjusting the the sampling because uh, I was having some lat latency earlier. But since I have a lot of instruments, it's taking a little bit of time. Yeah, so far I'm using, for this particular template, I'm using um, probably five different kinds of uh, VST libraries. So there's a uh, VST for strings, VST for percussion, and VST for horns, all different because even if a VST library comes complete with their own strings and ho their own horns, I still don't find it satisfying for some of the versions of horns, so I choose different types of VSTs depending on what I like best.
Hey there, uh, Alexander. What's up? Yeah, I should have set this up, this uh, audio settings earlier. But anyway, we're almost there. So how are you, Alexander? Ah, yeah, Moses, you're the one uh, with the top hat. <laughs> yeah, I like that, man. Uh-oh. <laughs> if you heard that sound, that was my... Uh, uh, power supply complaining. <laughs> of course, Alexander, that would be nice. Whew, this is taking a little bit long. Come on, come on. Okay, now I'm quoting South Park. The messages are really delayed. That's how it is, man. 30 second delay in Twitch. 15 second delay for Twitch partners, I think. Wow, this is taking long. Ah, there. It's doing the basis now. Almost there. Sorry for this. <laughs> anyway, so I, I'm planning to to orchestrate this whole Mega Man song uh, mostly for the entire string section, maybe the brass section if it needs, uh, if, it, if, it, if the sound needs one. But I will mostly focus today for the string section because well I think that's that's ac actually my plan for the arrangement okay let's continue so this is the arrangement of the melody dun, 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 dun. okay let's zoom that Okay, now this is where I edit the MIDI uh, with the mouse and keyboard, mouse and computer keyboard. Okay, there there is a running fast note, a fast running note right there, and let's listen to it. Let's listen to it, so I will not miss it. Okay, uh, just for uh, just a tip for for you guys, if you're into arranging arranging as well, when there's a really fast note that you couldn't figure out at first, there it's uh it's helpful to slow the tempo temporarily. Okay, let's create a temporary slow tempo for this part. There. Okay. Yes, Jason, I will replace all the tracks with live instruments. Well, of course, all those that I can play, okay, of course. I, if, uh, if you still don't know, the, the horn section in my Mini Mario Orchestra are still mi midis. I'm just playing with toy horns just for visual entertainment because I am a strings guy, obviously, with my channel name. <laughs> There we go. Okay, 
sorry. <laughs> okay, now let's delete the temporary tempo. And we got it. There you go. Okay, sometimes when it comes to running notes, uh, there's a, a characteristic of strings that sometimes running notes aren't always clear, crispy clear when it's played by strings, both in MIDI and both in live. So sometimes what, what arrangers do is they double it with another instrument that has a crispy sound. So for this, for this, I think I will use a xylophone. Okay, let's double that uh, violin track. Woohoo, cute! Just for that. There we go. There we go. That's our first section melody. Let's listen to it with the original track and see if it matches. Nice. Okay, now let's I think th the next part is just a doubling of that. Let's let's I'll I'll make sure. Okay, I think it's the same, but I think I, s I heard a subtle difference. Let's just check. Okay, there's a missing uh, pickup note. I, did, I've, I didn't put that at first. Actually, I might have missed that in the first part as well. Okay, it's also there. I like that xylophone sound. It sounds so cute. Okay, let's put that xylophone in the... It's a bit weird because the xylophone did not end in the downbeat, so... So let's put that one note there, the, the xylophone. Okay, let's proceed with the melody of the second section. Okay, let's do it two measures at a time because it's a fast passage. Okay, I think in the live version I will record this melody with an electric guitar lead, but for now, we're arranging it just for pure orchestra. Orchestra and a bit of... Um, 
Orchestra of the Rhythm Section. There we go. Okay, it wasn't synced very well. So, yeah. Okay, as you can see, uh, as I was explaining earlier, Jason, for example, this is the the notes that I recorded. Can you see the staggered uh, lines below? Those are actually the volume of each note or the the velocity, uh, the technical term. If I was to write it down with just mouse and keyboard, it would initially appear like this. Oh, wait. It would initially appear like that. All straight. It's too machine-like. And I will undo that and re get it back to the, the way I played it, like this. Now it sounds more human because there's a difference in dynamics between each note. And that's the reason why I play it manually. And that's what I do for all my arrangements. For At least for the main melodies and the main parts, I play all of it manually. Okay, that's it for the spiccato part. Let's put that in the legato. Nice. Okay, the third, uh, the, th uh, the the next part of the melody. Okay, <laughs> that was tricky. Okay, this time I'm going to create another temporary slow tempo so I can uh, listen to the melody carefully, more carefully, and uh, figure it out with ease. So let's half that tempo, 170. Let's make it around uh, 85. Okay, listen and listen again. Okay, first measure first. That that's it, I think. Yeah, I. This is that that's that, that's the way I do it. I sing the notes because uh, I will remember it better than just relying on my hands. Because, as you can see, I'm not a good pianist. Okay, it's saving. Okay, this time I think I can pull off it. I pull it off with a uh, mouse and keyboard again. Okay. 
I think that's it. Okay, what was your question? How do you, so you play in slow mo as well and speed it up? No, for the live performance, I already practice it uh, in the fast, fast performance because uh, by that time I will already. Okay, because like I explained earlier, I'm not a good pianist, but I'm an okay violinist. In fact, I think I would uh, be a competition to Miklachu as the world's okayest violinist. Uh, I would pull it off better with a violin, but sadly, there's still no uh, proper mechanism for a MIDI violin that has all the complete range of notes. <laughs> so everyone has to rely on a traditional piano type of a keyboard. Now, the next, next melody. Jason, uh, for the MIDI, sometimes, but if it's a bit hard to figure out the melody in its original tempo, I slow it down, but only in cases like this. Hey, that's a bit of a disco. Let's listen first to what we've recorded so far before we proceed. Okay. And goodbye, temporary tempo. Okay, let's listen to the solo. Haha! <laughs> <laughs> Bum rhythms. Okay, let's fix the rhythm first. <laughs> okay, I see the problem now. It's one tick ahead. Oops. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, what was that again? Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it. Well, Isaiah, I don't think uh, maybe patience has something to do with it, but I think it's more of an interest and passion to do it. This is what I live for, so I have the patience for it by default. <laughs> Oops, something's slightly off there. I think it's the... Okay, let me fix the 
volume of each note. Ah, yes. There is some doubling going on here. Okay. Let's proceed to the next melod melodic section. Okay, it's just arpeggios. as far as music play a bass in a guitarist stole my bass and amp <laughs> really <laughs> welcome back Tara <laughs> okay we're uh, we're almost done with the main melody I think uh, okay let's let's uh, double the whole thing yeah copying it to the legato and the fast parts I think it would benefit with the marimba Ah, uh, no, no, the xylophone. Whoops, some notes missing there. Ah, yes, I forgot to quantize the triplets. Quantize the friend. Of the rhythmically challenged people. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Okay, let's put some, let's adjust the volume of the notes to make it sound like uh, it's going louder, a crescendo. Now it's like a stair staircase. There, you see that stairs? That's going to high Hrothgar. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wrong rhythm. Too advanced. Okay, let's move that. And now let's move all those fast notes. Okay, let's listen without the marimba, uh, without the xylophone, and I'll show you why I always put the xylophone in when it comes to those kinds of running notes. Okay, now it sounds this decent already, but there are some parts that sounds like uh, it's a bit blurred when it comes to the running notes and that's a characteristic that comes with the string section I think live or midi uh, the string section tend to be blurred when it comes to fast running notes especially when it's a, a beginner string section where they don't play together <laughs> but there's a, a creative solution to that as an arranger so I put uh, for this for this example, I would use a xylophone, or sometimes they would use a marimba or a, a celesta, or sometimes just a piano. So there's that crispy running sound. Left knob. Well, in theory, I should be, but. Uh, uh, but sometimes, because this original of Me the original of Mega Man is written with just a computer background sound in so uh, in mind, and it's not uh, it's not originally arranged for a human to play it, and the tempo that I set right now, uh, one seventy, is approximately slower, but I might slow it down even a bit more later on as I record the live instruments because. Uh, I want to make it sound humanly possible as as well. 
Okay, let's listen to the whole thing, the whole melody section that I recorded. Sounds nice, right? Okay. Now, usually, I would already be excited to to arrange the second and third voicing of the violin strings, but uh, I I think, uh, but I think there's this some sort of uh, routine that I try to follow, where after I record the main melody, it has to be the skeleton parts first, like. Melody, rhythm, and bass, and then the middle parts come later. So let's finish, let's wrap up the melody. I think it's just a repeat. Okay, let's just wrap up that ending melody. Okay, let's just copy paste. Thanks to technology. Copy paste. Ha ha ha. That's it. <laughs> I forgot, forgot to play the octave higher one. Okay, quantize. There we go. So let's just copy paste that octave, octave repeat. There we go. Da 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 da. Time to one two three four. Okay, I missed one note. And copy that to both the staccato, uh, the legato, and the xylophone. Okay, the reason I'm putting staccato and and uh and staccato strings and legato strings side by side is because the legatos will provide the longer notes, but the staccatos will provide that crispy, crunchy bow sound of the violin. Because it if it's just legato, it will sound really muddy. Yeah, the rhythmic parts are not very clear. But if you just play the staccato part, it's too short, right? And now, so combined, it sounds more powerful that way. Alright, now we have completed the melody. Hooray for us! So let's listen one more time for the, uh, for the whole, to the whole melody with the original track. So let's just check if there's errors or something. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, I think the the strings part was too low on the range at the end. I just one register higher. Mm, okay, I, I think it's better, more powerful than the first one. Okay, let's proceed to. Okay, let's let me see. I can choose between the bass or the drums. So which do you like first, Dr bass or drums? Okay, bass it is. I think it's a un unanimous, guys. <laughs> okay, we're doing bass. <laughs> That's right. All about that bass. All your bass are belong to us. Whoops. Okay, this time I'm going to use the contra bass. Okay. Okay, okay, it's muted, okay. It's just a one note. Okay, let's see if I did that right. Dun -da -da -dun -da -da -dun -da -dun -da it's like the Lone Ranger. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think I just got the first pattern correct, so let's just copy paste that thing and do that for the entire entire section. Oops. <laughs> That's right, Tara. <laughs> William Tell over Overture. So it's just copy paste the entire thing. Okay, that there's just one chain. And I think it's the same. This is the same. Ah, it is the same. Okay, I'm arranging this for the solo contrabass staccato because I like the sound of the solo here. It sounds crispy, but I will also double that with another spiccato track above, right here, above here, so it sounds okay. It sounds too robotic when it's with a spiccato above. So what I will do, I will humanize it manually. So what I do is again let's erase everything yeah. sorry I erase that entire pattern there and start from not from scratch but at least so when you play tan -taran -taran -taran, the second note is usually the softer one so let's adjust that manually now now th now we're talking now we can copy paste that entire thing now it sounds now it looks more humanized. Not there. Big difference. Okay. Human non-humanized sound. 
robotic, humanized sound. There's a little bit of dynamic uh, changes that's uh, make uh, very subtle, but at least it doesn't make it sound like an android. Okay, the stuck. Okay, let me just play the staccato and spiccato. The spiccato is generally shorter, so this is the staccato. It's a little bit sustained, whereas when it's the spiccato, it's quicker, and that's the main difference about it. Okay, if I remember it right, it's supposed to be these notes. Dun 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 dun. dun. All right, and together with the solo bass, solo contrabass, okay, I think, yeah, I put that pa no, low, low passage too early, so it's moved here, oh, moving the whole thing, bad. Dun 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 dun. Okay, copy paste. Three meshes. One more copy. There, there we go. So that's the first half of the the bass. The humanized bass now I just copy that entire region. And we have the whole bass part for section one. Hey Zaralith. Brings me back to my high school days of concert band, hearing your perceptions making digital comes not so Yeah, that's right. Because uh, we are uh, well, we all know that uh, technological advances right now in music, and everyone getting access to music software is very easy right now. Especially when uh, when you buy a Mac and it comes with GarageBand and something like that. And uh, the only difference that we'll make is how to make your sound still real, because. You can o you can easily make uh, something out of the existing samples, or but will it sound real, or does it sound human, or will it sound like it's been played like an old Casio tone, where everything sounds like uh, so canned and so robotic, and that's the that's the thing I do with my digital arrangements. I I really make an effort to make it sound as if it's being played by a human. Because uh, it sounds more natural, even if it's digital. You see what I mean? Okay, let's listen to the strings part and the bass part. Nice. Okay, second part, bass. Ah, it's just one one note at a time. Dun 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 dun. I think we'll uh, this will benefit with a uh, legato. Dun dun dun. Dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. ok 
Okay, that's it, I think. We got lucky. <laughs> Let's see if it's in sync. One, two, three, four. Oh no, it's not. Definitely not in sync. It's Backstreet Boys. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. Bass is one of those neglected parts in any music, but it really makes it. It really makes the music complete. <laughs> okay, I think this uh, second part will benefit with a legato patch. Let's put a, Let's copy paste it in one of the legato patches. And I think the the last section is just a repeat. Oops. Welcome back, Soma. Okay, then now this is where it differs. Okay, I think it's just using the same pattern as the melody, so let's go ahead and pick up one of the melody parts and just copy it. And we'll just change the notes manually. Da -da 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 Nice. Okay, and we'll go ahead and copy paste that to the other bass tracks as well. Oh, there, there's just there's just one other bass track. Okay. Okay, let's listen to the entire contrabass section and violin one section of the melody and bass. I think it's a little bit forming up now. Woohoo! Let me just uh, combine all those regions. Yeah, and let's put the piano roll so you can see something going on while I'm playing it. There we go. And play! Oh, there's that uh, extra note that was missing uh, earlier. Cool! And now, what we have done is the basic skeleton or the basic foundation of the original cover. So I can do with this whatever I want. I can play it. I can slow it down. Yeah, this is... Uh, if I slow it down to 150, it becomes more of a, a headbang beat. Yeah. Woohoo! 
So I can do go with this or not. There's so many options now because you can now have the basic skeleton. Or if I can go crazy, I can go. Yeah. <laughs> but for now, we're going to go with the 170 BPM. Okay. Now, what we can do is, yeah, let's let's make it a bit more exciting. Let's. I will double the bass part and put that in one of my electric bass parts. I'm using the Rickenbacker bass. Let's listen to its solo. Uh, why does it sound ugly? Wait a minute. Why does it sound ugly? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, I think because it's because the MIDI notes are too... So too uh, too short. Let's let's change that. Yeah. There we go. Much better. Let's lengthen the ending notes. Oops, too long, too long. Okay, left knob. Once you get in all of the main voices from the original... Yes, th that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to compose the middle harmonies. Because that's kind of a bit more easier now once you have the basic structure. You can, I think, let's listen to the original. Yeah, I think the original has two main harmonies on the melody. It's just one a second voice and a first voice. But uh, I think I will go ahead and add a third voice later on. Hey, thank you, Byzant Byz Byzanity. Thank you for dropping by and uh, if you want to catch the rest of this uh, video, I will be posting this in YouTube after this uh, video. Yeah. And thank you for dropping by. Okay, let's listen. Let's go ahead and listen to to the version with the Rickenbacker bass guitar. Softening it a little. Yeah, it sounds more uh, deeper. Yeah, right. That bass. Okay. And now let's go ahead and do the drums. And now this is where th this is where we can get uh, this is where we can get a, a lot more creative because as you can see the 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 drums the drums part of the eight bit version is really very simple and it's a very low fi sounding drum drums. I can outright hear the hi hat and then the bass. I don't think there's even a kick drum. Yeah, there's no kick drum. Uh, so let's go ahead and create that bass. Let's just... Uh, I, I'll do it the way I do it uh, usually and just record the hi-hat parts first because it's the most recognizable pattern. Okay, hi hats.
Okay, now since we have the basic structure, I will record that part slower. I think I may have hammered the keyboard too much. But no way. Yeah, I have I've hammered it too much because it's all red. It means it's on the loud side of the notes. So I'll go ahead and soften those notes a little. It should be around for logic it should be around in the orangey area. Oops. Wap. No, 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 no. And add that two last notes. Hello, Boss Rush. Okay, I usually create my own manual drum patterns. I, I have lots of built-in loops here, but I like to create everything from, from scratch. As um, Most of the time, in theory, I'd like to create everything from scratch, including the drum tracks, because I want absolute control of what I can hear. I'm a control freak that way when it comes to arranging. Okay, that's one pattern. That's one set of patterns. Okay, let's go ahead and make this first, uh, the first hi-hat, the first hi-hat, uh, the first hi-hat note, I will convert that into a crash symbol. And now, I will play around with the drums. Maybe... That uh, Green Day pattern. No, it's too much, too much kick. Yeah, I think I'll go with this one. One, two, three. Nice. Okay, uh, the challenge I always give myself when it comes to drum tracks is to, at, as much as possible, every four measures is one set, and when I copy-paste it to the next part, it should have something different with it so it doesn't sound like a loop and it sounds more like a real drummer playing it. So I would usually add an extra an extra sound or maybe an extra roll. So let's I'll go ahead and do a drum roll at the end of this uh, second section of the drums. <laughs> okay, let me just fix the quantization of that. Yeah. Quantize. There we go. Tag, tag. Okay. And copy paste. Taka 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 taka. You want that's how a drums usually roll. Dun da dun da da dun dun da. That's how I that's how I figure out my drum rolls. I just sing it out loud. So snare one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, since it's all red. I will go ahead and humanize those and just give them random velocity settings by just pulling off those volume strands below what as you can see. Yeah. Tap tag tag tag. 
Pa 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 pa. Nice. Okay, now we have one, one full set of drums. Okay, back to my old ch my challenge. Okay, uh, the, uh, I will add another type of drum roll here or a drum fill in. Dug, 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 dug. Okay, I want that kind of grunge rock fill in. Dun, 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 where you play the drums, the bass, and the, b the kick, the snare, and the toms all together. It's a very common trope in grunge rock. Okay. It sounds better when quantized. And I will put a crescendo setting so it will play, play like it's getting louder. Okay, let me go ahead and double the snare drum at the second part. At the second... Uh, at the second... There we go. Now it sounds like a real drummer. Okay, now let's figure out what kind of drum pattern I will do here. Ah, I think she's add. There's some sort of a uh, synth tom toms. Okay, now to translate that in real drums, maybe I will make it a bit tom heavy. Something like something like. Let's see if it works. I think something like that. One. Now let's see to figure out that if a drummer, yeah, this is what I also do. I before I ar arrange the drum tracks, even if it's mid MIDI, I also try to visualize a real drummer playing it. So if it sounds like, how can a drummer play a cymbals, a hi hat, and four four floor tones at the same time? It's humanly impossible. So that's something I also consider when I'm writing the MIDI parts for drums because I want it to sound like a real drummer so of course there's no impossible parts but of course this is for realistic drumming style of course when I go crazy for other types of arrangements I just go crazy and add everything but for this one I like to make it sound particularly real I think I'll go with the loose Loose uh, hi hat for this one. Two. Okay, one. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Now it sounds like a no messy grunge drum, and that's my intention. Yeah, I think it works. Nice! Well, you... Uh, 
you 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 forgot to consider you ha- there's a pedal for hi hat. And I've seen lots of drummers go crazy with the hi hat pedal, and they can just virtually play any pattern. <laughs> Okay, copy paste. Well, you can loosen the hi hat settings uh, before you play. You can make it s- sound loose already, like the two hats are already almost separate, or then there's also a setting that it's tight very very tight especially in funk funk music <laughs> and see those hats on the background <laughs> mm-hmm. and there's also an alternating so it's not there's a, a bit of some spaces in between the floor tom and the snare and the hi-hat so he could alternate hi-hat pattern with the hand and then with the feet there's also so many fig- uh, things a drummer can do with, with lots of spaces in between the notes Dun, 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 dun. Uh, that's the break. Did I get that right? <laughs> Look at that messy drum. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, ending. Let's figure out the ending for the drums. How did they do it in the original? Yeah, this is what I do. Uh, if I can't find um, new ideas, I always go back to the original and see how they did it and maybe see if I can find something I can use. Uh, they just they just used the hi-hat all, the t- all throughout. No, I can't use that. I want to sound it like I want to make it sound complex. Maybe like Yeah. Okay, let's do that. There's one more. Okay, in syncopated symbols, alternating symbols. <laughs> Look at that ugly playing. I'm mis uh, misplaying some uh, extra notes. There we go. I love it when a good break comes comes together. Okay, let's listen to the whole thing again. So this is uh, what we have now is uh, the main melody 
in the violin one section, uh, the bass part being played by the contrabass section and an electric bass, and the drum section. Okay, let's see, and, and of course a xylophone for rhythmic highlights. Let's listen. Oh, sorry, I forgot to bring up the piano piano roll, so you have something to watch. Sorry. Oh, let's let's lay it with the notes. Almost full already. Nice. How did you find that so far? Oops, save. Okay, let's make it sound even more awesome. Let's already let's now go ahead and add the second voice. Okay, now this is, things get a little bit easier now since we have the skeleton structure. So right now, what we can do is uh, go ahead and copy paste the uh, original melody of violin one and put it in violin two. Stick spiccato first. Okay, now to figure out this is this can be a bit tricky, if, especially if you don't have some sort of uh, ear training or uh, you lack some pra practice. Is figuring out the middle harmony of any song. But if you're, for example, uh, became part of a choir or became uh, a backup singer of some sort in some part of your life, then you would understand. Okay, I think I I have a missing note here. Let's go ahead and fix that missing note. Yeah, I have some missing notes. Wow, I didn't notice that. Some missing rhythms. Let's just fix it right away quick. Also the same at the ending. Yeah, let's go ahead and copy paste both and move them together. There we go. <laughs> Missing note. It's always those 
pick up notes. Okay, now we can go ahead and do the second voice. basically the same so let's go ahead and edit that out so okay let delete bye bye and let's copy paste this whole thing that we just did. Copy paste that whole thing. And voila, it's the same. Yeah, all in. This is the first one and I think I'll do it again since because a lot of you are uh, very responsive with it. So yeah, expect more of this in the future I just can't promise a regular schedule because I'm always juggling between schedules anyway let's listen okay I think let's put that track in the legato part as well uh, legato part of violin too okay let's mute the original track Okay, now the second part. Done. Okay, it's a solo thing. Okay, those in the triplets. Da -da -da -da. Oh, this is this is going to be a little a little tricky, I think. La -da -da. La -da -da -da. Let's let's mute those first and listen. La Okay, since it's the original again, let's copy paste from the f first part. Yeah, this is uh this is the easy part when it comes to 
the middle harmonies you can just copy paste from the rhythmic parts that you originally did in the skeleton Okay, I think that second note is a, b a little too short. Yeah, let's lengthen that. Yeah, let's go ahead and lengthen all those notes all together for the entire piece. Thing that's too long. Okay, I'm just uh, doing some very, very fine tuning here. Why did why don't they want you to practice? Do, do, don't they know that it's part of your school? <laughs> But still, <laughs> it's cool. Why is there something going on? Ah yes, the the gato part isn't extended. So let's go ahead and put this in the legato part too. Dun 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 dun. That's two short notes. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, I have to extend this one so it sounds more full. Okay, now I have the second harmony, uh, the, the second voice. So the third harmony is usually just an octave lower of the original, uh, original melody. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. I put the main melody. In a violin 3 track or viola if you want to be technical. And I just select the entire thing, the entire thing, the entire MIDI. And then octave lower, everything. Bam. And I will put that in legato track 3.
okay there's there's still some notes that are a little bit too short for me so let's go ahead and link at least the ending for now ta -da -dun, ta -da -dun, ta -da -dun. so it's more fulfilling oops too long now this is where the the this is where the detailed tweaking comes so as you can see uh, as you can see very obviously now that even if uh, the, there is convenience of the technology ahead of me uh, and I'm doing everything just sitting on my computer I still have a lot of fine tuning to do manually to make it sound more natural So even if it needs to, even if I need to manually edit each note so that the final result will be a more natural sound, I would do it. Taran, okay, those notes are too short. Taran, taran, tan, tan. Uh, let's go ahead and lengthen. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, as you can see, I'm I've gone into tunnel vision mode, <laughs> and this is when I really take a closer look at each individual note if I need to, just to make sure that it doesn't sound robotic or unnatural or android-like. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Da -da -da -dun -dun. Because that's where the big difference comes between uh, those who really take care of what the sound, the final sound would be like, and those who just phone it in and just press the computer and just let the computer do everything for them. <laughs> that's not what I want to do. That's not how I roll. Okay, let's listen to what we have so far and it's nearly done for this session. Of course, in the live session in the live recording and hopefully I'm able to bring this video out for for the weekly video this coming weekend. Um it will have live violins and a distortion guitar so it would sound maybe a little bit closer to the Smash Brothers version. But that was a combination of electric guitars and the 8-bit version. So what I'm going to do is uh, violin, orchestra, 
maybe some brass section later on if I think it needs one, and electric guitars. Okay, let's listen again. Mega Man 2 main theme for orchestra. And this is the original Okay, I think uh, there's something I'd like to add that's not part of the original and it's a, an introduction because I'm also, when I'm also doing my YouTube covers, uh, there's a, a certain, when you play the video, there's a certain, sometimes there's a part that uh, the music, the video starts a bit late and the, the part of the music doesn't uh, get played and you have to press the replay button just to make it start from the beginning of the file so sometimes I already include that consideration in the music itself so I make for this for this I think I will make a drum intro Done. okay let's try Of course, chip tunes will always rock. Maybe something like that. I don't know. This is, uh, of course, a tentative decision. Oops. To back. Snare roll here. Okay, now it's time to play Devil's Advocate to myself. And this is where I try other options or I try other creative decisions like what if the main melody will is set an octave an octave lower. Let's mute the Let's mute the... Wait a minute. Oh, no wonder. Okay, there's something. I have to make a new spiccato track. So let's make this spic4. Okay. Uh, okay, let's mute the third violins for for a bit and let's let's see if it will make a difference if i make the original the the main melody and the second voice an octave lower because that's how it is in the original
yeah, the, the volume, the mixing still needs to be adjusted. Something sounds somehow it doesn't sound as powerful as when it's an octave higher. I think. Let's go. It. Let's put it back to the original one. Okay, I think this is the part where I put some chord breaks here. Let's just put that now. And I think after I put that, the the arrangement for this demo is, I think, will be done by then. Bam. Bam, bam. Let's figure out the chords. Mm. Okay, let's let's go with that. Dun dun. Dun. Dun dun. Okay, it's not quantized. Quantized guy. Bam, bam. <sighs> what happened here? I think our harmony, basic harmony, is complete for the MIDI parts. Okay, okay. Let's listen to it. Maybe I'll put that also in a new spiccato track to make it sound more oomph. Alright, Tara. Thank you for uh, dropping by. Good night.
Wrong break. <laughs> so obvious. I think let's go ahead and put a bass break there. Da-da-da. Da-da-da-da. Yeah, we're almost done, guys. Okay, let's listen. Okay, let's add a bass guitar roll. <laughs> Very subtle. Okay, let's play around. Let's have some fun. Let's. I wonder how it will sound very slow. Yeah, disco. I wonder. I wonder how it will sound if we add some disco bass. <laughs> Let's have some fun. Let's mess around. Yeah, it does kind of sound of like Giles' theme when it's slowed down. Huh? Okay, basic Euro beat. Okay, let's fill up the whole piece with that. Just to have fun. It doesn't mean I'll put it in the final. Let's just have fun because that's what music is for. Okay. Woohoo! It sounds like seventies disco. This could actually work as an alternate version, you know. <laughs> Wow, this this really works. <laughs> I like this actually. <laughs> Rocky Okay, let's just mute that disco drums. <laughs> That's right. Okay, let's let's mess around again. That how about if it's uh a bit faster?
Yeah, yeah, the 150. Uh, it's 20 BPM slower than the original tempo we're working on. I think this would work more as a live version. Sounds more human. Okay, now now uh, now the thing that the arrangement I remembered with this kind of tempo is my Mario Kart uh, Rainbow Road arrangement. Now I think uh, let's add let's go ahead and add some timpani for that for that extra accent. Dum bum. Sorry, sorry. Bum. Again. Paradam pam, paradam pam, pam pam. Paradam, paradam, pam. Yes, it's red. Paradam, pam, 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 pam. Tum. Okay, okay. Let's put the bass in here. Use the bass. All right, so I'm just now playing around because I've already finished all the basic parts so this is the time for experimentation uh, finding out the tempo that is better for a live ver version because like I explained earlier the original version is made to be played just by a computer and not by a human but if it's a human playing the music it should sound more in a natural tempo I think this is closer to it and this okay this is the original tempo that we were working on
Okay, I think uh, let's add a harp. Now, this is the part where I love adding the harp because it makes it even more epic. Let's see if it works. Yeah, feel free to ask me anything or talk about discuss anything if you want. I'm just uh, messing around now here, so it's all fun and games from here. I think this glissando doesn't work here, so I'll just add the regular arpeggio. Okay, now this is where I add the additional uh, textures uh, when I think it, when it comes to orchestral arrangements, textures are like when you play the texture parts individually, they seem like chaotic or not related to the music. But uh, if you play it together with them, then that's it, it will make sense. Piccato textures. That's all right, Alex. This is actually more than usual, and uh, my. We started at 21, so that's not bad. And that's more than my usual Twitch uh, concurrent users online. It's usually just 5 or 4 when I stream my games. But this one is an announced ahead of time. So uh, we, there's more of us than usual. Oops. 
Oops. Wrong paste. Okay, now I added here a pizzicato texture that will just really a texture the textures for orchestral arrangement or in any type of music for that matter is to kind of fill in the gaps when there's a space in the melody or in the rhythm but you fill it in without actually distracting from the main thing that's going on. So uh, let me just play for you what I did for the pizzicato strings like i said it's out when it played out of context it's it's like totally unrelated but when you play it together it makes sense <laughs> Okay, so this is the texture. <laughs> What's that? Is that a new piece? That's right, that's like a sneaking. It's like What's that? There's a, I think there's a soundtrack in Breath of Fire like something like that anyway so this is the texture Okay, now let's see what would happen if I add some brasses. So let's just take the original melody and put it in a brass section. Too high. Doesn't sound bad. Alone at least. sounds really brilliant with just the brass <laughs> but let's see how they sound together Okay, let's play that with the strings. Surprise. Surprise us. Again. Wow, that sounds thick. Whoa, I love that.
Okay, I think I found a, a, another part where the harp must appear. Okay, let me just fix the harp quickly before we proceed to listening pleasure. I need a big arpeggio there. Na 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 na. Okay, I think I think our texturing is complete. Let's listen to the whole thing. Let's see. I think let's put it into the more human human tempo. So I can also imagine myself practicing it for the mini Mario. Uh, by the way, this is a mini Mario Orchestra cover. Yeah, it's only 12 p.m. here, and it's almost lunch. So I'm uh, actually, I'm actually wrapping this up now. Because I know for some of you, it's already really, really late. Alright, I think 
Okay, the only thing missing now is probably some more tweaking on my part, but the only thing missing is now the live violin and the live distortion guitar who will do something like that. And maybe for the second part, maybe the, the melody here, I will give it to the lead guitar as well. But definitely, it will, I will check it out when I'm arranging the guitar part already. So let's listen again. I think we got a winner here. Okay, I want to listen again to that disco version. <laughs> And now let's go back to the original, original tempo. I was working on 170 BPM, but the real original tempo is 180. It's really, really fast and made for just a computer playing it, not humans. But let's listen to it anyway. Sounds too inhuman to quote from Marvel. <laughs> so maybe I guess I for the final performance I would maybe uh, uh, play it around the 150 or 160 BPM, and I might just throw in the disco version <laughs> as an alternate version. But yeah, uh, yeah. J j well, just to tease you a little bit more, this is just. Uh, part of a uh, two part medley because this is just the main theme and it's a little bit too short for a full video actually it's only less than a minute so I've already all decided beforehand that just for this demo I will arrange this main theme for you but the medley is a two part medley for Mega Man 2 and it will also include Dr. Wily's stage as a medley of this and the main theme.
Yeah, so I will combine those two. But for now, I think uh, yeah, I think we can, can conclude the streaming session here. So yeah, if uh, do you have any additional questions or additional inquiries or anything that you like to say or anything you have in your in your mind or in your your heart that you like to say? Come on, say it now. <laughs> Yeah, let me just save. <laughs> yeah, do you? Uh, so I guess you'll be interested to to see more of this kind of streaming uh, in the future. But this is actually the first time I've done this, and this is the first time I've tried this. I never thought uh, I was going to be able to pull this off because. I've become so used to just working alone with just myself and the computer and I've never worked in front of a live audience yet so I think uh, we've got something going on here <laughs> yeah Alex thank you very much Alex I think this was awesome too uh, what made me think of the yeah th there's actually a mini Mario orchestra behind the scenes video in my channel but to answer you briefly uh, it's an accident because there's this one video I did the Guild Wars 2 cover where I uh, I was running out of costume ideas so I just decided and go ahead and wear a Ma Mario costume for some of the background musicians and I thought those five background musicians playing playing instruments in Mario costumes why don't I make that into a full orchestra and that's where the idea came yeah any more questions guys let's uh come on spit them out before we end this stream maybe uh you have uh, uh question technical questions or s anything anything under the sun actually and oh yeah no zelda u for this year <laughs> Yeah, definitely a Mega Man 2 medley. But maybe instead of a full medley of all the songs, I I think I would prefer to do Mega Man one by one. So there's uh because there's so many interesting because the thing is when I do a medley, I tend to uh combine all the songs, but there's some sacrifices that has to be made to make the medley not too long. So some songs had to be cut short or some loops did not have to be repeated but I think when it comes to for example Mega Man 2 and Mega Man 3 I think each song deserves its own uh, its own rendition for example Sparkman music or Airman I think those definitely need their own standalone arrangements yeah like question uh, do you have any plans to do music scores I'm st no no plans no plans because I'm still doing them uh, Alex I've never stopped doing films film scores but I just don't post non video game related stuff anymore in my YouTube channel because uh, yeah I've decided to for now make the focus of my YouTube channel about video game music or some originals here and there but for for my film music it's always been going on it's one of my main bread and butters uh, film music and uh, commercial TV commercial music but I don't really post about those anyway because some of those are just really cheesy music for commercial jingles and <laughs> it's just one of those that I make them submit them to the client and then move on <laughs> Do you oft af after the volume between you make you stand up? Yes, uh, Jason. That's called the mixing process, and that's another. Uh, that's another maybe two to three hours or more of the session. Uh, mixing is one of those uh, end parts of the music making process. So the mixing, balancing everything, make sure it sounds. Uh, all the instruments are heard, not not necessarily equally, but. All the instruments functions are there and heard. Do you think the mini Mario Orchestra will change? Nas, I don't, I don't, I doubt the mini Mario Orchestra will be an issue with Nintendo because 
otherwise the mini mario orchestra isn't even a direct reference to mario itself there are so many videos like rich alvarez he has this stupid mario brothers uh series and there are so many others like college humor cracked and smosh who even have videos in direct reference to mario himself so I guess the Mini Mario Orchestra is just an indirect reference. So I guess it's safe when it comes to the video because uh, otherwise all those other videos would get take t- taken down as well. It's only just the audio that uh, Nintendo is pushing the issue with us. But videos, so far none, none have been taken down of my video game covers. It's just the licensing for iTunes that's uh, still being solved, I think. Some solutions are being offered, but still nothing final yet. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, Alex. Yeah, I uh, I always continue doing original music, but of course, uh, I I I take my time in posting a suitable original song in the YouTube channel because, uh. A lot of you guys, maybe not, ma- maybe not some of you here in the channel, but a lot of you guys in uh, and a lot of the subscribers have uh, subscribed specifically for video game music. And if I just post out of the blue a content that isn't related to video game music and it's out of context, even in my channel, then maybe people will definitely people some people will unsubscribe, and that's something I would like to avoid for now so uh, right now i'm maintaining the brand of the channel to video game music and some movie or tv music here and there and maybe originals sporadically i would inject but not too much for now just maybe because uh, i'm trying to do a Lindsay sterling if you get what i mean she started with posting all awesome covers of her violin and then when she's uh, racked up a significant amount of subscribers that's when she in started be doing her original stuff and because she's already awesome with her originals and her and her covers the subscribers sticked around so i'm i'm trying to emulate that kind of uh marketing scheme Yeah, I have a secondary channel already. Uh, the Diwa De Leon channel. The Diwa De Leon channel is... There is an active channel already that's uh, been been around at the same time as my oh, my, ori- my main channel, but it's, I just don't really post it. It's just mostly just for the, my clients so I can show them samples of my works. But if you're really interested to see it, uh, let me just... Let me let me <laughs> yeah see I don't use it that much I don't even memorize the link so uh let me uh pull it up for you yeah yeah I think it's in my it's in it's in, it's in one of my it's in one of my favorite channels in my uh main page ah uh, yeah this is the link to the second channel it's mostly filled with commercial music for philippine television so there might be languages that you might not understand but it's definitely music that i created oh thank you sherry yeah inertia it's one of those uh songs that i decided to put in the channel because it's kind of uh Yeah, I think this this is really fun. This is a really fun stream, and I think uh, I'm surprised even at myself that I was able to uh, do an arrangement in front of an audience because uh, I was already I was always too conscious to do that before. But now I think it's uh, we're on to something. So yeah, thank you very much, guys. Um, I'll see you soon. Maybe. Uh, yeah, you just uh, stay tuned for the video of this Mega Man cover. It's coming out on Saturday. It's a mini Mario Orchestra video. And I hope I uh, I make it in time. <laughs> yeah, I crashed. 
So anyway, thank you guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. Thank you for questions. Thank you for. Uh, I hope I kept you entertained, and thank you for uh, inquiries. I thank you for questions, and it also kept me entertained as I'm uh, arranging for you. Yeah, I think uh, Jason. I think it has to do with experience as well uh, because uh, I've never given it a chance, but now. I know I can pull it off and with you guys being very supportive <laughs> it's even better so yeah take care guys thank you very much and I'll see you soon you rock stay awesome bye stringies <laughs>